Alright people, welcome back to Rock the JVM. I'm Daniel, and in this video I'm going to talk about referential transparency and pure functional programming, and also why you should care about it. So this video will be a little more language agnostic in the sense that the referential transparency principles that I'm going to talk about do not depend on any particular language, although I'm going to write Scala in this video to demonstrate the examples. So if you want to write code with me, which I seriously recommend, then I will require you to have some basic knowledge of Scala, I will not use any fancy features. So as always, I'll recommend that you code with me, and whenever you need to refresh your memory about these concepts, just refer back to this video or to the written form at the blog with the link in the description. So without further ado, I have a simple Scala application here defined as an object with a main method. So here we will be able to run this application. And for this video, I'm writing Scala 3, but you can also use the older Scala 2 version if you wish. I'm not going to use any specific features of Scala. So I'm going to talk about referential transparency, which is a fancy term, and why you should care about it as a software engineer. So what is a referential transparent expression? So an expression is referentially transparent if you can replace it with its value and backwards at any place where that expression is used without changing the meaning of the program. So let me give an example of a referentially transparent expression. And I'm going to use a pretty dumb example. I'm going to define a method called add, which takes two numbers, like a of type int and b of type int, and this returns another int. And I'm going to simply return a plus b. Now, this expression here is referentially transparent because whenever we call this method, we know for sure that it just creates a value of type int, and so we can replace wherever we use add of two numbers with the value that it evaluates to. So I'm going to define, for example, a value called 5 as add with numbers 2 and 3. Of course, if we look at the code, add with 2 and 3 returns the number 5. But wherever I actually reuse either the number 5, the value here, or this expression, or the value that it evaluates to, I can basically return or obtain the same expression without changing the meaning of the program. So let me give some examples. Let's say I want to compute the number 10 as 5 plus 5. Well, of course, that's number 10. But I can obtain this number 10 in a variety of ways. I can say 10 version 2 as add with 2 and 3, plus add with 2 and 3. Because add doesn't really do anything besides computing the numbers a plus b, then I can reuse the expression add with 2 and 3 however many times I want without actually changing the meaning of the program. Also, I can say 10, let's call this version 3, as the number 5 plus add with 2 and 3. So notice that I simply replaced the first occurrence with add 2 and 3 with the value that it evaluates 2. And that is all happening without altering the result of the program. I can also say 10 version 4 as simply the number 10 to evaluate this entire expression. So all of these versions are exactly the same from the point of view of computation results and computation output. So if I choose to print any of these versions, 10, 10 version 2, version 3, and version 4 to the console, I will obtain the number 10 without any additional so-called side effects. So if I print line, let's say 10 version 3, I will obtain the number 10 to the console, and that will happen regardless of which version I choose to print in my little application here. So this might take a little bit of time to compile because my project is loaded cold, but we will see the number 10 printed to the console here. And this will happen regardless of whether I use 10 version 3 or version 4. My compilation should now be a little faster now. And we'll see still the number 10. So the meaning of the program does not change if we have what is called a referentially transparent expression, namely an expression with the property that we can replace its occurrence with the value that it evaluates to. Now, this is an example of what is a referentially transparent expression. We can also understand what a referentially transparent expression is by looking at a contrast with what a referentially transparent expression is not. So let's assume a fictitious example that you want to ask some money from a mob boss. So ask money from mob boss. And you have to call a simple method. Let's call this show me the money with money as an int. Of course, never use any standard data type to represent money. You'll probably get into trouble. And uh, here we have the implementation of, let's say, print line 
here's your cache, your excellency. Just assuming that mob boss is really like the uh, deference and respect kind of thing. So I'm going to print this out and I'm going to return the money with some interest. So I'm going to say money times, let's say 110 divided by 100. Let's say you want to do roughly 10% interest. So you go to a mob boss and you ask for some money, you have to give it back with 10% interest and very, very, very importantly, you have to show your respect. So mob bosses are really big on this respect kind of thing. So this print line statement has to be mandatory here. And let's assume for whatever reason that you are in a tight situation and you want to ask some money from the mob boss twice. So here's what I want you to do. I'm going to create an expression. I'm going to call this a grant with interest, so WI, and I'm simply going to call show me the money with $1,000. So show me the money with $1,000 will show the appropriate respect to the mob boss, and this will return $1,100. But let's assume that you ask for some money twice. In this case, you need to be really, really careful. So I'm going to define a value, let's call this two grand with interest, and I'm going to say show me the money with 1000 plus show me the money with 1000. Now in this case you ask for some money twice, you pay it back twice with the appropriate interest and you show the appropriate respect to the mob boss twice, one for each loan. But if you try to follow the referentially transparent property that we showed earlier and say two grand with interest and instead use the expression a grand with interest plus a grand with interest, then this version two expression is not the same as the first program because you ask for some money twice, you give it back twice, but you only pay your respects to the boss once. So if I comment the first program and I cut out the expression in main, we're going to see the respect being offered to the mob boss once. So here's your cash, your excellency. But if I use the commented expression instead of the version two one, and also comment out the first loan, so we are simply running this program in main, then we will show the respect to the mob boss twice as she or he might ask for. So trying to be smug about referential transparency can actually get into trouble because if you replace the non-referentially transparent expression here, which also has some side effects with just the value that it evaluates to, then that can get you into trouble with mob bosses. So this expression is not referentially transparent because besides computing a value, you also do something with the outside world. So this is called a side effect. So interacting with the world besides just computing a value is not a referentially transparent expression. And trying to replace the usage of such an expression with the value that it evaluates to will change the meaning of your program. And in case of mob bosses, they can get quite upset because they can go like, oh man, hey Tony, what are you doing? I lend you money twice and you pay respect to me once? And that can get you into real trouble. So let me give another example. Let's say that you've just been kidnapped and your kidnappers want to play Russian roulette with you. And I'm going to rely on a small function to determine what the time of the system is. So I'm gonna say, what's the time? And this will return a long, for example, and this will be system.currentTimeMillies or whatever your favorite time API is. Now, I'm going to define a value called current time and I'm going to simply call what's the time. So what's the time just like that. And I'm going to run you through two versions of a Russian roulette program. So I'm gonna say Russian roulette, and I'm going to do the following. If what's the time mod six is equal to zero, then the gun will shoot. So I'm going to return bang, otherwise just a click. Now the idea with this what's the time function is that it's not referentially transparent. Even though it doesn't receive any arguments, the fact is that you cannot really replace the call to what's the time with the value with which what's the time is being evaluated on. So if I copy and paste this Russian roulette thing and I add a Russian roulette version two and I replace what's the time with current time, 
then this may be different. So if in main I go print line Russian roulette and also print line Russian roulette version two, so let me add the version two suffix inside. If I run this enough times, you'll see a situation where the current time is actually different. So we have click and click, and then we have click and click. And if I run this enough times, we're going to obtain a bang. So lo and behold, we got a click in the first and bang in the second after a bunch of runs. That is because these what's the time calls are actually very close together and it's quite hard for them to get evaluated in different milliseconds. So notice that we can get different results in our program. And in the case of a Russian roulette, you can actually die. So this is what happens when your functions or when your expressions are not referentially transparent. Replacing them with the value that they evaluate to can get you killed in very dire situations. Now, joke aside, the referential transparency means that the expression may be freely replaced by its value that it evaluates to. So if an expression does anything else other than a pure computation, for example, modify some state or interact with the world in any way, for example, accessing the uh, system clock, then your expression is not referentially transparent. Now the question is why? Why do we care? The main benefit of referential transparency, I mean, one of the biggest ones, is that we can refactor our code really, really easily. So let me give an example. So let me define a method, let's call this an RT function, which takes two arguments A of type int, B of type int, and this returns A plus B. So really, really simple one. Now, let me define a big program. Let's call this a big computation. And here I'm going to say, well, let's call this comp1 as an RT function with two and three. And then I have a bunch of other computations. Let's call this comp2 and comp3. And finally, in this big computation, I can say comp1 plus comp2 plus comp3. Now, from uh, the looks of this code, you can very well tell that this RT function is being called with the same arguments multiple times. So it's worth not calling it multiple times and saving this as a variable. So I can say, for example, let's call this a big computation version two. And I can simply save one of them as my little variable over here. I'm gonna say comp. And finally, I can say comp plus comp plus comp. So this would be the refactored version, which is much more readable and really easy to understand. But this is only true if your function that you want to refactor is referentially transparent. If your uh, function that you want to refactor does something else other than the pure computation, then your refactor here will change the meaning of your program, much like the mob boss who wants to kill you if you are not showing enough respect. So this is one example of refactoring to be able to eliminate duplication of computations when they are calls to pure expressions, that is referentially transparent expressions with the same arguments. So this is, let's call this refactor one. Another example of refactoring is to be able to extract variables and be able to reuse them if your functions or if your expressions are referentially transparent. So I'm going to define a bunch of RTF that is referentially transparent functions. And let's call this RTF1 with an A as an int, and this simply returns A plus one. And I'm going to copy that, let's say four times, and I'm gonna have RTF2, RTF3, RTF4, and this does a bunch of things. Let's say A times 10, A plus 100, and A plus A. So something like that. So we have some functions that are referentially transparent because they simply compute values. The implementations are not necessarily important. What we care is that they're referentially transparent. So this is refactor number two. Now, the example goes like this. Let's say that we have a big program and this is a combination of calls from RTF one, two, three, and four. So let's say we got, let's call this an RT function with an RT function with RTF1, RTF1 with one, RTF1 with two, RTF2 with two, and the second member is going to be another RT function with RTF3 with three, and RTF4 
with the number 4 or 20 or whatever you might want to pass here. Now this expression, while correct, is not necessarily that readable. So it's worth extracting variables so that we might actually read this code a little bit better and also be able to reuse some expressions later as we did before. So I'm going to hit Option Command V here on IntelliJ and extract a variable. So I'm going to call this E1 and I'm going to do the same with RTF2 Command Option V. I think it's Control Alt V on Windows. So this is expression 2 I'm going to use the expression 3 here, so E3, and finally I'm going to run that with E4. And I can still refactor these purely functional or referentially transparent expressions. So I'm going to call this E12, that is the result of expression 1 and expression 2. And finally I can refactor that to E34. So notice that our code is broken down and much easier to read. And we can also reuse these expressions later in our, in our code if our expressions are being reused multiple times. Now this refactoring is only applicable if your expressions that you are refactoring are referentially transparent because otherwise you change the order of evaluation of your program and that might cause trouble if you're also producing side effects. So this is only true or this will not change the meaning of your program if the expressions that you're saving here as variables are referentially transparent. Now benefit number two of using referential transparency is that we can very very easily keep track of our code execution. That is because unless we have referentially transparent expressions, all of our code becomes subject for debuggers. And this is why we actually need complex debuggers and inspectors and all kinds of tools attached to IDEs. That is because our expressions are usually not referentially transparent, especially in imperative languages like Java. And we might need debuggers to actually understand what is happening in our code. But with referentially transparent expressions, that doesn't have to be the case. So to keep track of code execution, this is provable with a simple example. Let's call this sum n, which takes an n as an argument, and this returns an integer which is the sum of all naturals up to n. Now I can implement that really quick with some recursion, so I'm going to say if n is less than or equal to 0, I'm only going to care about naturals, I'm going to return 0, otherwise I'm going to say n plus sum n with n minus 1. Now this function is referentially transparent. As you can see, there is no side effecting here. We only compute pure values or some operators which are also pure. So the plus operator is referentially transparent. Now, because I've written something like this, if we want to keep track or if we want to understand how this code evaluates, for example, if I say sum n with the number five, well, that's easy to keep track of because sum n with five is five plus sum n with four. And I'm going to copy some n here because I'm going to type it multiple times. And this is going to be 5 plus 4 plus sum n with 3. And again, this is 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus sum n with 2. And then I'm going to also obtain 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus sum n with 1. And same here. So I'm going to have 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 and then sum in 0, and that will be the sum of all the numbers 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, plus 0, and that is going to be, so 1, 2, 3, 4, that's 15. So notice how easy it is to keep track of code execution with recursion. We can break it down even in plain text without the need for debuggers in case we get stuck or if we get into some errors. So referential transparency is a really powerful tool in your arsenal regardless of what programming language you use because it allows us for easy refactoring and replaceability of our code. In essence, referential transparency is just a fancy term for replaceable code. And I hope that after this video, you will use RT a little bit more often. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, go ahead and subscribe to the channel for me. Click the like button and give me feedback in the comments. I read every single piece. And join me on Twitter and LinkedIn. I post fresh updates on upcoming material and also new content on Scala and Akka and Apache Spark and functional programming and many other goodies at rockthejvm.com where I have some awesome courses for you. Until next time, Daniel signing off.